Hi everyone, Lewis here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my first impressions of the War Z. So the game is still in alpha, of course, so there is going to be a lot of changes from now to a full release of the game, which I'd imagine would be in a few months' time. And there has been a lot of changes from the actual release of the alpha as well, which was two weeks ago, flattening out most of the big game-breaking bugs and some other things. So... The game is, of course, you know, available to pretty much anyone who buys the game or pre-orders the game right now. So I thought it was a good time to do a little first impressions of a video and telling you guys what exactly I think of it. Of course, I am going to be drawing some comparisons to Daisy because for pretty much in the same market, I guess, they are definitely similar games. There's no denying that. So anyway, let's go ahead and create my character, which I'm going to conveniently call Lewis because you do need a unique name. For those of you guys who don't know what normal and hardcore is... It's what you think it is. Hardcore is the same as DayZ. You know, as soon as you get killed, you die. And normal is where when your character dies, you basically can't play on it for an hour. It might be increased in the full release. I'd imagine it would be tweaked from one hour. And then you can go back on your character. And it does also drop all of your inventory. So it's not like, you know, you're going to kill someone and they might not drop all the inventory because they are a normal mode character or something stupid like that. So let's click on continue. And you can see there's a lot of customization for your characters. Currently, three different skins you can play as. There is going to be more that in the full release we can see you can change a few different things i'm just going to stick with austin right here or however the hell you pronounce that i'm very good at pronunciation apparently um i guess this skin looks very um intimidating and let's change his pants to these ones yeah those look hot so create new survivor and let's get straight into the game so i am going to be showing you guys how it is for a fresh spawn basically i am going to be getting some gear and i'll show you how i'm going to be doing that very soon once we get in game but when you're going to come play a game, of course, you do have a few different options. The options which are greyed out are simply greyed out because, you know, the game is now. It's still an alpha, like I've said. So, these options will be added in the future, so it's going to be very easy to play with friends. But I'm just going to go ahead and quick join because, to be honest, I don't really care which server I join as long as there's bloody people on the server. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, first off... A few comparisons to DayZ whilst it loads. So a big problem people had with DayZ was all F4. And I do actually know this has been fixed in the newest DayZ patch, which I believe is 1.7.3. But up to then, Alt F4 basically meant you could survive gunfights. You can't do it in this game. Once you press ESC and then quit, you have to wait 30 seconds until you can actually move. So that's a big change. But like I said, it has been changed in DayZ, so it is not really too valid right now. So this is pretty much the worst spawn in existence. These areas right here are safe areas, and right now you can only access 30% of the map, which is, of course, this area right here. All these places which are pixelated, you cannot access right now. Once it goes in beta, they are going to be, of course, releasing it slowly parts of the map as well. So that's fine. It's just going to take a while so we can bug test each of the areas and then work up from there. So I'm just going to quickly get to a C and then come back to you guys so we can talk a bit about how exactly the looting system works in the okay, game. Okay, so we're not quite at a city right now, but you can see to my left there is a small city over there with a supermarket and some other stuff over there. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and head up the hill. And I'm just going to briefly talk about loot before we do actually get inside the city and check for it. So... Looting right now is a bit weird in that things such as guns spawn in the same place every single time. This is definitely going to be changed in the final version because you can just serve a hop from one to another and then just take the gun and yeah, just hoard a shit ton of guns. It's pretty stupid. It's definitely going to be changed in the final version, but that is how looting works right now. At the start, in you know the little villages and whatnot, you are going to be finding a lot of melee weapons. There's bats, there's pickaxes. There's spiked bats, there's quite a few different melee weapons. I'm not quite sure if the damage is really different too much on them. And I do know a attack from the behind, at least in PvP, does a lot more damage than it does if you are attacking from the front. So a big change from this compared to DayZ or just Armour 2 in general is that you can't turn your head. It's not really a big surprise that you can't turn your head as you can in Armour 2 just by holding Alt and then turning. But it does mean that it's a lot easier to backstab someone, like I just said. I'm not sure if it's that way on purpose, because obviously then you could just keep on looking around, you know, and just checking all over around you. But if you don't have that feature, it's very easy to get behind someone without noticing. Say, if, for example, if you see someone like me just running along here, and there's a guy right behind me running over there. He knows for a fact that I can't see him. So, it's a bit weird in armor too, because you can sometimes see people, and they might not know that you can see them. So, that's kind of cool I guess. I did know originally when the game started you did actually spawn for flashlight but apparently you don't spawn a flashlight anymore. I haven't played the game too much recently because I'm just waiting for bugs to be really um, completely pressed down and then I can enjoy the game you know just so I don't get stressed out too much out of the game. So let's see what I've got over here so it looks like is that a zombie over there I'm not really sure. So there's a few zombies over here and I'm not quite sure what this area is I've never been to it before. 
But I think I might go ahead and crouch over to some loot and hopefully get a spike bounce. Oh, God. I forgot about that. I think I might have aggroed it. No, I haven't. So, oh, have I? No. Okay. So, a big, well, not really a big thing, but you can find zombies which are crouched. I just aggroed it. Shit. Right. Let's get on top of here. So, zombies which are lying down like that, if you walk over them, you do aggro them. I'm not sure if this is really a game feature or not, but if you stand on top of cars, you completely avoid zombies. Zombies are pretty stupid, so... I'm just going to quickly run over here and... Oh! There's a floating hat here. Can I take floating hat? Come on, hat. There we go. So there we go. We've already got our first piece of gear. A bloody hat. And you can see already, I look awesome. So... That's pretty cool. A cool thing about the game is a shit ton of customization. You're not going to have a problem of being like, Oh, it's right, you person? You know... You're going to know who's who because you can have a rather unique look each. So, let's see what else we got over here. So, we've got a police station. I do know a police station can contain some pretty good shit. So, I'm not going to go ahead and quickly try to loot it. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to get to it. Right, let's go on top of here. Pick up this loot right here. So, this is another mask. You can get a lot of different masks right now. There'll probably be some more in the full version. And I'm just going to wear this because it looks pretty cool. Um. So, yeah. One cool thing is, you can see to the right of the player's names, you can see what the, I don't really know what the name of it is, I guess, reputation kind of. And you can see I'm neutral because I haven't killed anyone, but once you start killing people, you're going to become a bandit and then a super bandit. So, if you see a super bandit, you probably don't want to trust them. So, it's kind of cool, but it does, of course, reveal what someone's intentions are before you even get to them. I'd say, is anything useful in here? So, there's this over here, which is a gas mask. I don't think there's anything too useful over here. And is that another... Oh god, I don't want to go in there. Okay, so it looks like that's actually another helmet. So basically, I'm just collecting hats right now. This is like Team Forest 2, so um, not really too much loot in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to one of these safe areas. I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier. Holy shit, yeah, so many hats. What the hell is happening here? Right, let's just collect all these bloody hats for no apparent reason. I'm going to put on this one. This one looks awesome. Oh shit! Right, apparently zombies can get on top of that one. It's because that one's destroyed, so zombies can get on top of destroyed cars, but not on normal ones. Kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't. Alright, let's go ahead and jump on top of here and hopefully lose the zombie aggro quickly. Alright, I am not here. I'm invisible. Okay, I think I fooled them. Very good job, Lewis. Okay. So anyway, I'm just going to quickly head over into a bit, safer, a bit safer of a location. And then head over to one of these safe zones, which I'll talk about in just a second as well. Okay, so I've literally moved about five feet, but now I can show you guys the safe zones. So these red circled areas are what they call safe zones. As suggested by the name, they are very safe. You're not going to get shot inside the safe zones, of course. When you're leaving them, you are vulnerable to gunfire. But once you are in them, you're not going to be shot by anyone. You can talk to people, that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool. And inside these safe zones, you can access something called a global inventory. And the global inventory is what it sounds like. It's an inventory of your entire account. So in my case, I have played the game quite a lot. So I've got some stored guns in there. Some, a lot of water. A shit ton of water. In fact, way too much water. I've got like 30 litres of bloody water. Um, you know, some food. It's kind of an interesting thing. I'm not quite sure how it's going to be in a full game once I've got a full map, depending on how many safe zones it's going to be in the full map. You know, it might be a bit too easy to just go ahead and get a lot of cool loot. It does kind of make it always useful to stay safe, I guess, kind of thing. You know, you're not going to have the whole mentality of, my character's going to die soon and then that's that, GG. You do want to survive, you want to get to a safe zone and then drop off all the valuable possessions which you've um, gathered, I guess, in your journeys and then continue on your adventure and then if you do die, then you've got something to go back on. In my case, I've got literally nothing because I'm a fresh spawn. I do need to go to a safe area, then get some food, get some drink and some guns. Just so I can show you guys how the guns work in the game. And to be honest, I haven't really shot too many guns at zombies, but I haven't been involved in quite a lot of PvP, mainly in the big city over here, which I like to call Cherno, because a big problem right now, at least as far as I can tell, I might just be being stupid, but these places don't have any names, so you just have to make up names for them, or just like number them, like this city can be called number one, this can be number two, this can be number three, and so on. It's kind of weird in that sense, but hopefully that will be changed in the final version, so the places have actually got names, so then it's a bit easier to coordinate where the hell you and your friends are. Of course, once we do add in the feature of joining your friends, it is going to be pretty easy to join them, and what I just said is completely void, so <laughs> it kind of makes sense, well not makes sense, but it's understandable why there isn't names. So I'm just going to go ahead and check inside the supermarket over here and the post office. Okay, okay so the main thing I'm looking for right now is a bloody weapon. Is that a weapon? Oh shit, no, that's zombies. So I've got lots of zombie aggro, but I do have a chem light as well, so 
Uh, cam lights and flares in this game are very useful to show you where you are and to light up the area. Cam light whites in particular are very good at lighting up an area, you know, especially at night time. I think I'm not 100% sure, but I do know it's not real time. The timing on the game is, I think, six hours for a full day. So if you are going to be playing for a few hours, you are probably going to experience not only daytime, but nighttime. And the time is actually global. So say, for example, if I'm on, uh, I've seen EU 65, I think it was, when I first asked. And I go to EU 50, all of a sudden, I'm going to have, you know, exactly the same time in that map thing. If that makes any sense. It kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. So... Basically, times are cool. Okay, I'm just going to get on top of this car again to try to lose the zombie aggro. Okay, so as you can see on the map, I'm just a bit further north and I'm quite close to the safe zone, so I'm just going to head over there like a plan initially. So, a big problem with the game is voice over IP doesn't exist. So, if you come up to someone, you know, you have to either use global by pressing F2 or using proximity by pressing F1, then say like, hello, friend. And then by that time, they probably already have a flash down for murdering you. So it's kind of, well, it's not kind of, it's really awkward because there isn't a voice of IP. There's definite plans to have that in time for release or maybe just after release. Either way, that should make the game basically a lot better. There's also plans for cars that aren't in the game right now. And as far as I can tell, helicopters at least, or something which the devs just don't want in the game. I don't quite know why. There's still going to be random events like military bases, abandoned military bases, which I've seen in the video. Um, a helicopter crash site. I do know there's one um, stationary just up here. I don't know if that's going to be permanent. Hopefully, there are still random events which you're going to find around the map. So then you're going to find some good loot there. But yeah, anyway, continuing our adventure over to a safe zone, hopefully. I really do like the ambient noises in the game as well. It's nice to just run around listening to the birds. The woodpeckers, all that kind of stuff, just hitting trees, you know, because obviously the animals are very angry that they're in a zombie apocalypse. So, understandably so, they're hitting trees. That's cool. That's okay. You guys continue doing that. And a big issue right now is that the game, well, not the game, but the map is rather linear because, of course, you've only got 30% of the map. You'll find a lot of the time you're going to end up just kind of going the same direction. I mean, mainly because 30%, like I said, but you're not going to be able to go this way forever. You're going to find a lot of mountains which are restricting your movement, whereas on DayZ, you can pretty much go in any direction without having any real issues because you can just climb up pretty much the steepest mountains in the game, which is kind of silly, but at the same time, it's kind of nice. But I still do like the detail to the environments. You'll find lots of cities, even the bigger city, have pretty much... Well, not pretty much, but a lot of enterable buildings you can go in and, you know, multiple story ones which you can lock down, you can get some barricades, put them in the front door, stop zombies from getting in and it's just a really cool experience to kind of lock down a city with a bunch of friends in one of the big houses. Hopefully, I should actually get to show you guys the house which I'm talking about, but maybe not. I'll see what happens once we get in the city because, of course, that is the big PvP zone. You can see there's 30 people on the server, well, roughly 30 people. So, 30 people on this small of a map, well, not small, but smallish. The whole map is just a bit smaller than Janaris, well, quite a bit, but not that much smaller than Janaris. So, there's probably going to be some horrible stuff happening in the city, you know, snipers, I'll probably just die. Don't expect too much action from the video, I'm just trying to just tell you guys what I think of the game, okay? So, I'm sorry if I don't become an MLG pro, but hopefully you guys get the idea of my thoughts of the game so far. But anyway, continuing along, I am actually going to go over here, a quick detour to our left, and try to get some loot from a caved-in road kind of thing. It's got like a military camp at the top, some guns normally at the top. I found a shotgun earlier, so hopefully I should be able to get some loot from there. You know, not just going to use my global inventory. I would like to show you guys what it is like to loot places which aren't already looted, as the previous two cities were, unfortunately. So there it is, the lovely caved-in thingamabob. I don't know if this is going to be accessible once there's more than 30% of the map. It might still be caved-in, but right now it is kind of interesting. You can see there's already zombies there. It's not like Daisy in that, you know, you're going to walk somewhere and then the zombies are going to spawn. Unless, it might still work that way, but it seems, from my experience, as if the zombies are there before you get there. So it's kind of interesting, I guess. All right, so I'm just going to check these cars quickly. The cool thing about looting in this game, from what I've seen, is that a lot of loot you can find in cars. You know, you can... Right, there we go. Some water, some instant oatmeal. So you'll have to check inside cars. There'll be, like, guns inside the cars, some stuff on the back of these. So it's kind of a lot of fun, I guess, just checking what's inside cars. Um, you know, anticipating, and then you're like, bang, what's inside this car? And it's like, some more water, a bigger bo uh, bottle of water. In fact, I'm just going to quickly drink some water because I'm a bit low. You can see in the bottom left, you have got the usual um, drinking and eating meters and also a lovely sprint meter. So you will need to keep yourself lovely and uh, hydrated. Otherwise, you are going to run out of sprint very quickly.
And there's bandages DX, which is basically a bigger version of a bandages. Um, I am going to eat this food here quickly as well. I'm going to throw a uh, chem light for no apparent reason other than for fun. Vroom. Pop. So they're very useful at night time. But right now, you can imagine they aren't really too useful whatsoever. Oh, a flashlight. Beautiful. So this is normally what, well, it's what you used to start with. You can see, you can go, wha, wha. Oh shit, it apparently attracts zombies. Okay, I didn't expect this. Okay, right. Okay, we don't want to go that way. <laughs> I think I may be changed. I'm pretty sure I didn't used to attract zombies, but it looks like it does now. So that's great. Let's go quickly see if this has got any more loot for me. What's this? A flare. Beautiful. Alright, let's see. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Lovely and safe. Yeah, let's throw this flare as well for fun. Wah! Oh, yeah, that was awesome. So, I'm not going to be able to kill any zombies with a flashlight because the flashlight sucks. But that's okay because that wasn't my intention. Alright, so I just got myself a lovely hammer. So, let's equip the hammer. The hammer is quite good at taking out zombies, but mainly single zombies. Um, going across about 50 zombies like this isn't a good idea. So,. I've shown how the loot is right now, but you are going to find most of the loot inside the city. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly head to the safe zone and hopefully show you guys my lovely global inventory and how exactly that works. Of course, you do have your third person and first person. I just did just see some binoculars back here, so I'm going to try to maybe get them. Oh, God, I don't think I can get these. You can see them just over there beside the zombie right there. You can't right-click in this game. So you can see the binoculars right there, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get them. I do have a few in my global inventory, but it would be nice to get. Anyway, come at me, zombies. Come on, bros. Come on. Come on, asshole. Right, so we're going to find the zombies over here. And jump up here. For God's sake. Oh, there's more binoculars over here. Well, there's two binoculars over here. What the hell? Okay, I'll just take these ones instead. You can stock items as well, which is why I said existing items added to on the right. Anyway. Enough bloody wasting time. I'm going to go to the safe zone quickly. And by the way, if anyone is curious, yes, I am running the game maxed out. But of course, it is a 1280x720, which, to be honest, isn't ever going to be the resolution you're going to be playing at. I just do it because it's pretty much a standard for YouTube. So it is going to be looking a lot better at 1920x1080 or something like that. The main criticism I've got of the graphics is just the jaggies. Anti-aliasing is on in the options, but at a low resolution like this, you can see there's a shit ton of jaggies all over my screen. And it's making my eyes bleed. So that is kind of shitty. And another thing I don't really like, but probably, maybe, possibly, will be changed, is that you can right-click, like I said earlier, but you can't right-click if you, in fact, that's full. Um, wait, let's just drop this quickly. Oh, drop and put that there. You can't right-click unless you've got a weapon equipped. And then, obviously, if you right-click with a weapon, then you're just going to go on the iron sights. Well, not with a weapon, but with, like, a rifle or something like that, you're going to go on the iron sights. So, that is kind of annoying because it is really useful to zoom in on things. But I guess it does force people to actually use binoculars. You know, binoculars uh, are pretty useful to use. You know, it's got, like, brum, and then all of a sudden you can see shit. It's pretty good. So, since I have got a few pairs of these, I think I'm going to take them with me on my sniping trip and hopefully shoot some people.